There's no greater strategy for Satan than to attack the foundation of our faith, the name of Christ. And so if Satan knows that there's one name that we can call on to be saved, it's obvious that he would do everything in his power to attack that one name. Did you know that the name Jesus is less than 400 years old? Where did this name come from? And what was the original name of our Messiah? When you say that the name of Jesus is the wrong name, that's an attack on the Greek New Testament because that's where we get the name Jesus. We derive it from Isus in the Greek New Testament. And if you're gonna say that the Greek New Testament is wrong, then all of Christianity just went out the window because Christianity is built on the foundation of the New Testament. So if you say, well, the New Testament wasn't written in Greek or the Greek New Testament that we have is wrong, we have no foundation. For, uh, for 30 years of my life, for 30 years of my life, um, I used to love quote unquote white Jesus. It's not really his name. We both know it's not his name. I don't think it's a proper translation. And when you go back to the Greek being um, I-E-S-O-U-S, um, Iusus was in reference to Helios or, or Osiris um, being Zeus. I don't think that, that we have a perfect translation left. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, I think that we have parts. The Greek New Testament is the foundation of Christianity. And if you don't believe that the Greek New Testament is authentic, then you are left with nothing. All these scriptures in one way or another are kind of marred, but I'm thankful that we have something um, that we can dig through. If Satan can get us to doubt the Bible, the foundation of our faith, the Word of God, then he could get us to believe anything. And even right at the beginning, when Satan deceived Eve in the garden, Satan looked at her and he says, Yea, hath God said, can you really take him at his word? And so that's what the people of the Hebrew Roots movement often have to go towards is they say, hey, we don't have a preserved word of God. And so therefore, it's all speculation and yea, hath God said. In my 40 years, 40 years of studying the scriptures, now I've come to the conclusion that um, they're not perfect. I think that Mattith Yahu was written in Hebrew. There's a lot of those letters or scrolls, Megillahs were written in Hebrew. Matthew was originally written in, in Hebrew. One of the main focuses of the Hebrew Roots Movement is this idea that there's something special about the Hebrew language. And they even go so far as to say that the New Testament was originally written in Hebrew. The reality is there is no evidence to prove such an idea. 22 of the New Testament books were written specifically to Greek people in Greek places. And so therefore we can conclude that they were writing in Greek and not Hebrew because those people that they were writing to were Greek speaking people. Every single book in the New Testament mentions the name of Jesus. If you look at the titles of the books, it isn't hard to figure out that they're primarily written to a Greek speaking audience. You've got the book of Romans, you've got first and second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, where are these places? Okay, well, obviously we know Rome is in Italy and had a heavy Greek influence, a great Greek speaking population there, as well as Latin, of course. Then you have Corinth, a city in Greece. You've got Thessalonica. All of these different places are in the Greek speaking world. Then you go to the book of Revelation, and who is it sent to? The seven churches in Asia or Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. Greek speaking places. They're written to Greek speaking people. You've got the book of Luke written to Theophilus. You've got the book of Acts written to Theophilus. You've got Romans chapter 16 where the apostle Paul goes down through a list of his friends and friend after friend after friend has a Greek name. Sosthenes, Silvanus, Timotheus, and there's Yeshua. It just makes no sense at all how we can call all these Greek people by their name that actually lived in this area, and then there's just this one man that's called by his Hebrew name. And so it makes no sense if Jesus living amongst all these Greek-speaking people in the Roman Empire is to be called as Yeshua. You go to the book of 2 John, 
3rd John. You'll see John bringing up Greek-speaking people as his fellow laborers, as his fellow church members. And so it's crystal clear in the New Testament that it's being addressed to a Greek-speaking audience. That's why we know that the New Testament was written in Greek, aside from the fact that there are almost 6,000 manuscripts of it written in Greek, zero manuscripts of it written in Hebrew, okay? So if the New Testament was written in Greek and consistently the name of the Savior is Jesus, in German that's Jesus, in Spanish that's Jesus, in Greek it's Jesus, in English it's Jesus. It's not Yeshua. This book, the Greek New Testament, never says Yeshua one time. It never contains the Tetragrammaton one time. It says Jesus and it calls God the Lord. So it's clear that you'd have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to believe that the New Testament was originally written in Hebrew. Brother Matt, we have to understand how crucial this doctrine is. Because the Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So it's crucial to understand the name. If we have two names at risk right here, if we have the name of the Savior being put to, to test by these demonic Hebrew Roots Movement teachers, if the name of the Savior is being put to the test whereby we are saved, it's a very dangerous doctrine. So to say that the name of Jesus has only been around for 400 years isn't just an attack on the translations of the Bible, it's also an attack on the very foundation of the Bible, the actual Greek manuscripts. And that is the end game of this Hebrew Roots movement. It's actually to get people into Judaism. It's to get people to reject Christianity and go to Judaism. It's the gateway drug of Judaism. Okay, they want to get you to have doubt in the New Testament, doubt the Greek New Testament, doubt the name of Jesus, doubt its authenticity. They want to get you all excited about the Hebrew because what they really want you reading is a Hebrew Old Testament and that's all they want you to accept. They want you to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it comes down to. And the people that are behind this are Jews, they're crypto Jews that are trying to get people away from Christianity and into Judaism.